Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Mr. Martinez, you may continue with cross-examination. Ma'am, take a look at uh, Exhibit 78. And uh, you indicated that you were in this vicinity here with your head in this direction when Mr. Alexander was in this vicinity sort of next to you, correct? Yes. And you indicated that you were able to get up, right? Yes. He was within a foot of you, wasn't he? That sounds right. I don't know. Sounds about right. Well, he was within uh, an arm's length. He could have touched you if he wanted to, right? Um, I think so. He would have to reach down, I guess. Pardon? He would I have can't to hear you. Either pull the microphone up. He would have to you. reach down because I was on the ground, but within arm's length, I guess so, yeah. Or he could have kicked you if he wanted to. That's how close he was, right? Yes, he was that close. And you were able to get up, right? After rolling, I got up, yes. So you rolled then, right? Yes. You were able to get up, right? Yes. And he was standing right there, correct? Um, in the same place, but right. I rolled away, yes. And then you began to run, correct? Yes. And he began to run after you, right? I heard his footsteps. I didn't look. You didn't tell us about it. In fact, when you testified prior to trial, you told us that you didn't know if he was coming after you, right? Prior to trial? Prior this morning, when you testified. Do you remember testifying this morning? Yeah, I didn't know for certain because I didn't look back. Ma'am, my question to you is, do you remember testifying this morning? Yes. And do you remember we discussed this issue about going down the hallway? Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember that you told us that you had no idea where he was. Overruled, you may answer. I didn't say that. You said that you didn't know if he was following you because you weren't paying attention. Do you remember that? Um, I, no, I don't remember saying I didn't know. I just remember saying that I wasn't sure. And that you didn't know, didn't, you said that you didn't even hear him, right? You didn't say that, anything about hearing him, did you? I didn't say that I heard him. I didn't say that I didn't hear him. So you're now saying that you did hear him coming after you, right? I'm saying that I thought I heard footsteps well, running after me. When you say you think, it implies that, that you're not sure. Did you or did you not hear footsteps as you're going down the hallway? I think I did. Okay, so you heard footsteps. That means he's running after you, right? That's what I believed. Well, all we care about is what you believe in. So you say that he, you hear his footsteps, right? Yes. So he is coming after you, right? Yes, he is. Makes you scared, right? Very. And you're saying that this individual who's in shape is not able to catch you before you turn the corner to go into the uh, closet, right? He did not. That's what you're saying, that he wasn't fast enough to do it, right? Um, that's right. And you slammed the door, right? I did. You can't see through the door, right? That's correct. So how do you know he's still mad? Because Travis never calmed down that quickly. Ma'am, you couldn't see through the door at his expression on his face, could you? That's correct. You couldn't see his eyes, correct? Correct. And so you're inside this closet, right? Yes. And you don't know what he's doing outside, according to you, right? That's right. And so even though you don't know what he's doing outside, you claim you go for a weapon, right? Uh, not immediately. My thought was to run through the other door first. So then you sat, sat around and waited? Is that, there was a period of time here that you waited then? No, it all happened very quickly, this whole okay, thing. Okay, well then I thought you said that you thought, or did, that you took some time to think this out. It was, in, it was like instantaneous. I just thought as soon as I slammed the door, I was going to run through the other door. And then in a split second, I realized where the gun was and I went to grab it so that I could pointed at him and protect myself. So you're inside this closet, right? Yes. And you're ahead of him, aren't you? In other um, words, he's on the other side of the door, right? That was my thought. I also had a fear. I'm not asking you what your thinking was. I'm asking you, isn't it true that he was outside of the door? Well, I, I don't know where he was. I just well, know okay. that I shut the door. Then he was somewhere in the bedroom then, right? I don't know, he could have been in the bedroom or down, running down the hallway to meet me at the other end of the door. Bottom line, he wasn't in the closet with you is what you're telling us, right? Yes, that's right. And you don't know what he's doing during this period of time that he's out there, right? Um, 
Yes or no? Do you know what he's doing while he's out there? Specify which period of time you're referring to. The period of time where you're not seeing him. You don't know what he's doing. That's correct. And this is a period of time that allows you for contemplation or to think, right? Um, if I was in my right mind, yes. Well, I'm not asking you whether or not you were in your right mind, was I? No. I was asking you whether or not you had time to think, right? Objection asked and answered. A world. Um, I may have had time, but... Well, didn't you just tell us just now that you sat, not sat, that you thought about what you were going to do next, right? Yes, I thought of getting away. And so the answer is yes, you did think, right? Yes. And in fact, when he was, when you were doing this thinking, he wasn't in the closet, right? Um, no, he was opening the door at that Ma point. Ma'am, he wasn't in the closet, was he? Um, he was opening the door and entering I'm the closet. I'm not asking you if he was opening the door. I'm at, you, the way you told the story just now was that you slammed the door. Didn't you just say that? Yes, I did. And when you slammed the door, you didn't get his foot, right? He didn't have his foot in the door, right? No. He didn't have his hand somewhere so that the door didn't close, right? That's right. The door closed, right? Yes. And for whatever period of time, he was outside, right? I guess because it opened pretty much right away. Ma'am, during this time, you were ahead of him inside of that closet, according to you, right? That's right. You had enough time to grab the door, right? No, I slammed it. You, you touched the door, right? Yes. And you slammed the door, right? Yes. It shut, right? Yes. At that point, he wasn't in that enclosed area with you, correct? In that very second, no, he was right. not. You could have continued running out of this door here, couldn't you? Yes. You chose not to because you thought about it, right? Um, I don't remember really thinking. I just remember being scared and trying to put distance. And you could have, though, run out and put distance between, to use your term, between you and him by running out this door, right? That's right. Exactly. And if you would have run out this door, you could have then run down the hallway, right? Again, right? That's possible. Well, it's, it's something you could have done, right? Um, if he hadn't stopped me, possibly, Well, yes. wait a minute. You said that you were alone in the closet after you slammed the door for a period of time, a brief period of time, whatever it was, right? Um, yes. And then, so during that brief period of time, when this person who obviously is in shape cannot catch you, you could have just run around and gone down the hallway, correct? Um, not if I'm trying to keep him away from me. Ma'am, you could have done that, couldn't you? Then you were alone in the closet, right? Yes, I was. And so if you're alone in the closet, nothing is stopping you from heading in this exit door. Not, I know it's a do door. Let's just call it a door. Okay. You could have then taken another right. You were familiar with his house, right? Yes. You were familiar with the fact that you could have gone down the hallway, right? Yes. And then you could have taken a quick left and you would have been down the stairs, right? No, I probably would have been dead. Well, ma'am, you could have done that, couldn't you? Not unless I was suicidal. Well, you're, you're saying that all of a sudden, between the door to the closet, the one that's in the bedroom, and the door to the closet that's in the bathroom, he somehow got a lot faster than he did from this area here going all the way around. You're saying he all of a sudden got a lot faster, right? Characterizes her testimony. Is that your question? Ma'am, the distance from here all the way around to the door is further than the distance from where you were standing inside of the closet to this door here, isn't it? Yes. So you could have continued running through here, couldn't you? Yes. He wasn't in the closet at that time, was he? Um, he was by that point, yes. Well, and so he's now in the closet, and you're saying that if he's in the closet, and yet he allows you, according to you, because now he's in the closet, he allows you to get up and get the gun. That's what you're saying. Because he's now in the closet, right? He entered the closet at the point that I was jumping up on the shelf. So he, so then the door is opening then, not when you told us before, but when you're going up towards the shelf, right? 
Yes, when I told you before, which was almost immediately after. Ma'am, my question to you is, when you went in, you were able to have time to go towards the shelves, right? Yes. And you just told us now that during that period of time, whatever it was, he was not in the closet, right? At that very moment, he had not opened the door. Right. So then you just said that you were going over to the closet an area to get the gun, right? The corner. The corner, right? And as you are in that corner, he's coming in through the door, right? Yes, as I'm beginning to step up onto the shelf. Right, you're beginning to step up. And you're saying now that this person who's coming after you and that is angry has now given you more time and you now have more time to get the gun from up in the closet, right? Um, yes, that's correct. But man, this is a very small closet, isn't it? No, it's bigger than the cell that I live in. It's bigger than what? It's bigger than the cell that I live in. It's not a small closet. Ma'am, we don't want to know where you live in. Do you understand that? I'm just using that as reference. It's not small. Do you understand? Did I ask you where you were living? No. We're clear, right? We do not want to know where you're living right now. Do you understand that? Okay, sorry. No need to be. Take that attitude that is there an issue with you with answering the questions as they're posed? Sometimes, but I'm trying to answer them the best I can. So is it an attitude issue with you then? Objection, argumentative, Your Honor. Move to strike. Overruled. You may answer. Um, I don't think it is. So this closet here is a small closet, isn't it? No. Objection, ask and answer. Overruled. Not in my opinion. It's actually, actually about 11 and, a, uh, 11 and a half feet, isn't it? From the door over there to this door here, isn't it? I don't know, but that sounds somewhat accurate. I would have said 12. It sounds what? I, I, I can't hear it you. It sounds somewhat accurate, but I don't really know as far as distance how long 11 and a half feet is. Well, then let's take a look at exhibit number 249. See the measurement of the line from here to there? Do you see what the measurement is? Yes. It's 11 feet 4 inches, right? Yes. So it's approximately a little bit over 11 and a half feet long then, right? Um, around that, yes. So you're in this closet. You reach out to get this gun, right? Yes. And on direct examination, do you remember looking at this photograph, which is exhibit number 70? Yes. And you indicated that the gun was up in this corner here, right? Yes. That's a pretty high shelf there, isn't it? No. How tall are you, ma'am? I believe I'm five, five and a half, last time I checked. And this shelving, do you see that there? Yes. It goes almost to the roof. You see that? Yes. And you see the thing to the right here, the door? Yes. It is higher than the door, isn't it? Yes. You're saying that standing there in front of that shelf, you could, at five foot six, you can reach up and grab that top there? No, that's not what I'm saying. In fact, you have to get up on the shelves to do it, don't you? 
Yes, I just got up on one. Yes or no? Yes. And when you get up on these shelves, it isn't a situation that you can just get up with one hand, is it? I did. So I you did were able to somehow put one foot on one of these shelves, right? Yes. And without putting your hand any, the other hand, which, which hand did you grab it with? I don't remember. All right. With the hand that was free that you did not use to grab, that you were able to just put one foot up there, grab the gun, even though you said it was way in the back. It's just sitting right in the corner, not way in the back. There is no back because that's the wall. Well, this is the back part right here. That's the term that you used. Yes. And so you're saying that it's in that corner you can, according to you, put your foot on one of these shelves without disturbing anything else and reach out and grab the gun, right? That's what I did. And, and you didn't disturb anything else in that closet, right? Nothing was disturbed, right? No, my foot went right on the edge. Pardon? My foot went right on the edge. And you didn't disturb any of the shoes, right? No. Didn't disturb any of the pants there, right? That's correct. Didn't disturb any of the ties that are there. Nothing was disturbed, right? Um, no. Yes, that's right. Nothing was disturbed. If we take a look at exhibit number 69. This gives us a further out view, doesn't it? Yes. And it also includes the bench seat, right? Yes. Nothing is disturbed then, right? That's right. And yet you're saying that this very angry man is coming through here, coming after you, right? Yes. And that he is very upset about his camera and that you're able to get the gun up here, right? That's right. Is this the same gun that you told the detective that he didn't own? That's right. Can't have it both ways, ma'am. Back then on June 10th of 2008, you did say he did not own a gun, correct? Yes, I did. And no one was even consulting you about the investigation. You initiated that contact, right? That's right. You agree that what you are telling us today is to be more than fair, inconsistent with that statement, right? That's right. And this thing or the statement about the gun, this didn't come, that you said that it involved a gun didn't come for years until after you had been arrested, correct? Um, yes, years it took me to admit it. So the answer is yes, it came years later, right? Yes. Ma'am, um, we've reviewed a lot of text messages, we've reviewed um, a lot of email or some email correspondence and, and even your journal. And the text messages, there was some exchanges between you and Mr. Alexander that could be defined as heated, correct? Yes. You guys were fighting at some, some of these points, right? Um, I would say arguing, yes. Okay, arguing then, right? And nowhere in those text messages does he ever threaten you physically, does he? Um, no, he doesn't. He doesn't, does he? That's correct. And there is no email correspondence in which he's threatening you, correct? Um, trying to think. I know we talk about it, but there aren't any threats made. There are no threats, correct? Yes. And there's no police report because you never called the police, right? That's right. There are no individuals that have come in to say that they saw him mistreat you, correct? Um, physically, that's right. Well, no. Um, you're saying that there are individuals that came in here that say that he mistreated you some other way? Objection, um, uh, burden shifting. Overall. Yeah, I do. Okay, so Dan Freeman testified, right? Yes. He indicated that he treated you appropriately. Didn't he say that? He did say that. He and also in said fact, the opposite. There was only one fight that, that he was present, right? Yes. This is the trip to have a soup eye. Do you remember that? Yes, I was mortified about it. Pardon? Yes, I remember that. 
And do you remember that the reason that there was a fight was that he was trying to make sure that the trip was an enjoyable one, right? I don't remember Dan saying that. Well, do you remember he said that it needed to be enjoyable and that you needed to take out whatever heavy products were in your backpack. Do you remember that? I remember that's what started the argument. Right. And you got mad at him, right? No, he got mad at me. Oh, so Dan Freeman got mad at you? Oh, I thought you were talking about Travis. No, I'm asking about Dan Freeman. No, I've never been mad at Dan Freeman. I'm not asking if you're mad at Dan Freeman. You, Dan Freeman did not get mad at you then, did he? No, he didn't. And in fact, he indicated he was just trying to make the trip enjoyable because these backpacks can get heavy, right? Yes, something to that effect. And um, somehow, given what Dan Freeman did, it became a fight between you and Mr. Alexander, right? Um, it sparked a fight, yes. And the way you phrased it, it was Mr. Alexander's fault, right? That time, yes, it was. Even though you're the person who was upset at having to conform to what somebody else wanted you to do, right? Mm, I wasn't that upset. Well, you started the fight, not Mr. Alexander, like you're saying, right? No, I took the backpack upstairs and he came in and started screaming at me. So you didn't, did, your actions in no way, shape, or form, ma'am, contributed to the problems that happened that morning before you went to have a soup bite. No, they definitely contributed. And you, they started it, didn't they? Um, I didn't think we were arguing, so well, I they, don't know. Your actions were the ones that started this whole fracas, weren't they? I guess. I don't no, know. don't say that you guess, ma'am. You were there, right? Yes, I was there. And you know how the fight started, right? I do. Yeah, and it was because you had an attitude because Daniel Freeman had gotten got into your stuff and removed items, right? Overall, do you mean answer? Uh, that's not when I would consider the argument beginning. All right, you don't consider that. In fact, though, we've looked at these text messages and and we've been talking about whether or not there's any indication that Mr. Alexander ever threatened physical harm to you, and you said no, right? Yes. But you did. You threatened physical harm to him, didn't you? As a joke, I think I did. No, once. yes or no, didn't you threaten him with physical harm? Yes or no? Um, I don't remember ever threatening Travis with physical harm, ever. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at one of the exhibits that you entered, Exhibit 443. Start at the top. He says to you, it gets old when you dramatize everything. You stress me out on a regular basis. You have 27 hours and you're moaning about not making PC. You shouldn't hang up on someone trying to help you. Now you are on your own. That's what it says, right? Yes. That is not a happy text message, is it? No, it isn't. That is not a joking text message, right? Yes. And then you say, nor should you have to. That's your response, right? No, that's... That's oh, incoming, that's you. Nor should I have to, yes. And then he respond, and then you say after that, within seconds, I wanted to tell you something about today. It, it's important and time is of the essence, right? That's yes. what you tell him. Yes. He responds to you, too bad you shouldn't have hung up on me, right? Uh, yes. Still not a joking conversation, right? Yes. Still a fight or an argument by a text message, right? Yes. And then you say, it was for your own benefit, not mine. I only wanted to tell you because I care about you, right? Yes. Now the mood is changing. You only did this because you cared for him, right? Yes. And so, uh, hanging up on him is because you really love him, right? I guess indirectly it could be that way. Okay, so the, you show love by, in this circumstance, hanging up on him, right? If I didn't love him, his swearing wouldn't hurt as bad, so I wouldn't hang up on him, so yes. You hung up on him, right? Yes, I did. And you hung up on him because you love him, right? That's what you're saying. 
I'm saying in an indirect way it could be construed that so way. So the answer is yes, correct? That's not the direct reason. But you're, you hung up on him and you're saying that you hung up on him because you love him. Yes or no? Put plainly like that, I would have to say no. Okay. And then he says, whatever, Jody, doesn't he? Yes. He's upset at that point, right? He, um, I don't know. You think he's happy there? Rejection costs for speculation. Overall, do me answer. No, I don't think that. Pardon? I don't think that. Well, the first text message was at 1653, and we understand that that's seven hours ahead. The text message where he says, whatever Jody, is 1657. Do you see that? Uh, yes. It's a roughly about four minutes later, right? Right. And you told us that you guys were fighting in this conversation, right? Um, yes, we were arguing. Right, during these four minutes that it takes to text message back and forth, right? So it's not a joking conversation, right? Um, not at this point. No. And then you answer almost immediately, I'll whatever you in the nose, Travis. Yes. You think that's funny, right? That's a joke. Yeah, that was his joke that he used to say. Pardon? That was his joke you think that that's he used funny? to say. I'm asking you if you think that's funny. If um, that's a joke. I was hoping he would think it's funny. Ma'am, I'm asking you if you think that's the joke. The whatever you in the nose? How whatever you in the nose, Travis, right. Um, well, that was my goal, so at the time, yeah. So you thought it was a joke, right? Yeah, Even though you're in the joke. middle of a fight. Yeah, I'm trying to diffuse his anger. But that's not what it indicates there. Travis, I'm trying to diffuse the anger. Yeah, she, I'm, I'm, I'm going to punch you in the nose. She's already said what it indicates. Overall, do me answer. Well, not if you know Travis. That yeah, would be yes a or joke. No, you're wrong. So that well, would be all right, then let's, th let's take a look at the next message. It says, I was just trying to help you. I've hung up, you've hung up on me several times before, even after I've asked you not to. It's reasonable that I shouldn't tolerate swearing, but again, I'm very sorry, have a great day. You're still fighting in between there, aren't you? No, I'm trying to ameliorate the situation. Fight isn't over, that's why you're apologizing, right? Um. I guess. So it's not a joke then, right? No, it was a joke. So you say that you grabbed the gun from this area here, this is exhibit number 70, up at the top without disturbing anything, right? That's correct. And so then, what do you do? Right as I'm reaching for it or getting up on the shelf, he's opening the door, so I run out the other door. And he follows me, and I turn and point well, the gun Well, let me at stop him. you there. What you're saying is that you were able to get the gun before he opens the door, right? No, it's right. It's contemporaneous with that. So he's opening the door, and you're grabbing the gun? Around that time, yes. Okay. Right around the same moment. So if you're down here toward the end here, which is near the door, you agree with me that the gun was near the door, right? Um, when I grabbed it, yes. Pardon? When I grabbed it, yes. No, when it's kept up here. Oh. This, this is near the door in area, isn't it? Yes. And you're saying that that's the time that he's opening the door to get into the closet, right? As I'm going for it, yes. Yes. So you have at least a 11 and a half to 12 foot head start at that point, don't you? Um, yes. And with that head start, which is the length of the closet, by the time he's opening the door, if you chose to, you could have been out this door, couldn't you? Yes. You chose to escalate this, didn't you? Even though you had that 12-foot head start, didn't you? No, I didn't choose to escalate it. I was trying to de-escalate it. And you chose to de-escalate the situation by, according to you, getting a handgun, right? Yes. Just like in this situation here, in Exhibit 443, you tried to de-escalate the fight by telling him, I'll whatever you in the nose, Travis, right? Yes, except that was a joke. Yes, yes or no? Yes. So then, that you've now grabbed the gun,
take a look at exhibit number 72. You see the closet door there? Yes. That's the one that you came out of, right? Yes. Where do you go? Into the bathroom. Pardon? Into the bathroom. This is the bathroom that we're looking at, right? Mm-hmm, yes. And so you go in there, where do you stand? In the center. So this would be the center, right about here, right? Um, I don't know, it's a little farther than that. So you're even further away than this picture shows into the bathroom, right? Um, I'm right about there. And you run in, into the bathroom, don't you? Yes. You're in a hurry, right? Yes. You want to get away, right? Um, I want him to not get close to me. Well, you want to get away. That's what's going on, right? I want him to not get near me. That's what's going right. on. Right. And so you're going quickly, aren't you? Yes, it was frantic. You're not going leisurely, right? Definitely not. And so when you get inside here, you what? run in here? Is that what you do? I took a few steps and turned around. All right. The few steps that you take, are they quick running steps or are they just leisurely steps? They are quick steps. Like running, right? Because you want to get away from the circumstance according to you, right? Yes, but the floor was wet and it was kind of slippery. But you had socks, right? Um, I don't remember. Well, then let me help you refresh your recollection. Take a look at exhibit 162. See that photograph there? Yes. You see that foot there, right? Yes. That is your foot, right? Yes. There is some footwear on there, correct? Yes. That is a sock, right? Yes. Or are you saying it's a shoe? Which one is it? It's a black sock. So, you run in here. And you say it's wet, right? Yes. But if anybody is more wet, it's him, right? Yes. Because if you're talking about slipping, he's the one that's more apt to slip because he's the one that's wet, correct? Correct. Not you, because you are not wet, right? Um, yes, that's right. And the socks provide better traction, don't they? Yes. And so what you do then is, according to you, is you then go in here and then you pivot, right? Or turn around. Yes. Right? That's correct. You run in here, you don't run that way. It's easier to go to the right, isn't it, than it is to come to the center of the bathroom, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I wasn't thinking of left or right or forward or what. It's just it's closer to go to the right down the hallway than it is to come into this area in the bathroom, isn't it? Um, I would say it's equal distance. All right, so it's equal distance in this area that you go to. Uh, and then you turn around, right, which takes some time. Right? Um, yeah, half right. a second. It does take some time to pivot, doesn't it? You have the gun. Which hand do you have the gun in? Both. So um, you have it out like this with both hands outstretched? Yes. Correct? Yes. And so you have the gun outstretched, and he's still not there yet, right? He's still in the closet. He's coming out the door as I turn. So he's at the door now, right? How far away are you from the door? Um, I don't know. I'm somewhere in the middle of the bathroom. You're in the middle of the bathroom, and he's standing at the door, right? He's not standing, he's running toward me. So he's running very fast, right? Yes. Almost without giving you a time to react, right? That's the way you described it, right? Um, I don't know, I, he just was running at me as I turned around. Right, and he was really close at the time you turned around, right? Um, I don't know. He was coming at me. He got down. I understand he was coming at you. I'm talking about how close he was. He was close, right? He was um, closer than I wanted him to be at that moment, but I don't know what you mean by close. Well, how close is he, him being closer than you wanted him to be? How close is that? Um, 
I don't know. I just didn't want him to I understand to get you didn't me. want him near you, but how close is he to you? Is, was he as close as you and the court reporter? Overruled. Um, at one point, yes, but that distance was closed. Okay, and that distance was closed after, or the distance was closed, and then you shot him, though. In other words, he got closer before you shot him. <laughs> Um, I think it was all simultaneous. You think what? It was all simultaneous. You don't have any problem remembering this part of the, the uh, event, do you? When you break it down that much, yes. I'm not, a, it's, it's something that, according to you, you said on direct examination, I've never killed anyone before. Do you remember saying that? Yes, I remember. So it's kind of a highlight in your life, wouldn't you agree? Or a low light, however you want to look at it. A defining moment. Right. And as a defining moment, to use your term, it's something that'll stick with you, won't it? Yes. And so I'm asking about a defining moment in your life, how far away this individual was when you had the gun out, the gun that you brought from Wairika, didn't you? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony as a compound question. Restate your question. You brought the gun from Wairika, didn't you? No. So? How far away was he? He was running toward me, so the distance varied. Well, he couldn't have been running towards you very long because if he's here in the breach of the door and you're right a little bit down here, that's within four feet, isn't it? I guess. I don't know how long it was. Well, then maybe if we take a look at the... Uh, the measurements here. It'll tell us a little bit, okay? You see that the door is 33 inches, right? Yes. And that's where he was standing, right? He was never just standing, he was in motion. That's where he went through in the breachway when you saw him coming at you according to you, correct? That's correct. And the distance from here to here, and if you want, I'll show you, it's 36 inches. Do you see that? No, where? It's right here. Okay. So that's three feet, right? Um, yes. And if you just take that out and you stand right there, isn't that about where you told me you were? About three feet from the door? No, I didn't say that. It was more in the center of the bathroom. It was what? In the center, more toward the center of the bathroom. All right, if it was in the center, can you see how far this is here? Can you see yes. if that's a six or not? That looks like a six. All right, so if we go six and three feet, that's nine feet, right? Yes, but that's not accurate. So you're saying whoever measured this didn't measure this accurately? <laughs> no, not the measurements. Correlate to where she was, these talking apples and oranges. Uh, objection to the speaking of the nature of the uh, objection. I'm going to uh, overrule the objection. You may restate your question. The distance from here to here, you told us, is three feet, right? Yes. The distance from here to there is about nine feet, right? Um. Objection foundation. She is correct on the she didn't make these measurements. Sustained. All right. This says six feet, right? Yes. This says 36 inches, right? Yes. So that's nine feet total, right? Yes. And you were standing, you said, about the middle of this room, right? Right about here. That's what you said, right? A little more t right around there somewhere, yes. Right, right about the middle. And if we take it across, that would be where the six was. Do you see that? It looks about to scale, yes. Pardon? It looks like it's to scale. I'm going to object to the accuracy of the measurements, Judge, in terms of where he's asking her and the measurement of where she was standing. Approach, please.
Merci. So you said that you were right here, correct? Right about there. And then he's coming through the door, right? Yes. And you have your hands outstretched with the gun, right? Yes. So that, uh, in terms of the, how close he is to you, that brings him, the length of your arms, that brings him that much closer, closer to the muzzle of the weapon, doesn't it? Yes. And he's moving fast, isn't he? Yes, he is moving very fast. And you said it happened very, very quickly, right? Yes. He's not wearing any clothing, correct? Correct. And he comes at you, right? Yes. And according to you, he is on you when you shoot him, right? Not quite on me. I think the, the gun went off and then he impacted me right shortly after that. What I'm asking, ma'am, is you have your hands outstretched, right? Yes. And he's coming towards you because you've already told us that you're here, correct? Right about there. And that he is coming through the door, right? Yes. And you have your hands outstretched toward facing him, don't you? Uh, yes. And that he keeps coming towards you, and he's not stopping, is what you told us, right? Yes. And in fact, according to your testimony on direct, he falls on top of you, right? He lunges at me like a linebacker. He lunges at you, and that's when the gun goes off, right? It went off prior to... Prior to him lunging at you? No, prior to impacting me. So in other words, he's lunging at you and is almost on you, and then the weapon, according to you, goes off, right? Um, something like that. He lunged. He went to lunge as the gun was going off, and then he impacted me. So he's already moving sort of in the air towards you when the gun goes off, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes, he was moving, like, for my waist. And he comes towards you, right? Yes. And you keep saying like a linebacker. Well, what does that mean? Because linebackers kind of get down low and crouch, and then they attack, or they whatever they do, and that's kind of what it reminded me of. He didn't get down with his hand on the ground, but he got down low, and he he impacted my torso. Like no, 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 no. I, I'm not asking where he impacted your torso. I want to know how he was standing such that you can define it, define it as a linebacker stance. Because it reminded me of a linebacker the way he... I understand that it lunged. reminded you of that. What was he doing? Yes. Finish it. Yes. He... When he lunged at me, he, was, he crouched like a linebacker, kind of. That's why I say that, because that's what it reminded me of. I understand that's what it reminded you of. How does a linebacker crouch, ma'am? Explain that to me. You just keep defining a linebacker crouching by saying he crouches like a linebacker. How? He got down kind of low. Okay, does that mean that he was all the way down on the ground? Is that what you're saying? No, it's almost like he dove. Kind of like that. So he's, he dove at you and he's very close, correct? Um... Yeah, he was pretty close, I guess. Too close for my comfort. And as he's diving towards you, that's when the gun goes off, right? I think so, yes. Well, no, you it was there. contemporaneous. It all happened so fast. And you do have your hands outstretched, right? Yes. And from then on, you say that you don't remember anything, right? No, I remember a little bit after that. Well, okay. What happened to the gun? I... It got knocked out of my hand. How did it get knocked out of your hand then? The impact. The impact from what? From Travis hitting me. So he actually fell on top of, he was that close that he fell on top of you, right? Um, we both fell together, but he didn't fall on top of me. I was trying to prevent him from getting on top of me. He lunged at me and hit me and knocked the gun out of my hand. And we both fell backward toward the trash can. I don't understand. You said that you're out here with the gun outstretched, right? Yes. And that he's lunging towards you, right? That's correct. And he's looking at you, though, isn't he, when he's lunging? Um, I don't know where he's looking. I don't know where he was looking. You could see his face, right? 
I don't recall like looking in his eyes, seeing his face. I'm, I'm not asking you if you're looking at his eyes. I'm asking you whether or not you could see his face. Um, not really. Like he was kind of like okay. Bent. So what you're saying Dying. then is that he is more like a bull rather than a linebacker because he's got his head down and he's charging like a bull with his head down. That's what you're saying, right? Not quite down like that. Maybe in between. That would be accurate. All right, so he's in between here. If he's got his head down, as you tell us that he does, and you say you can't see his face, Father. That's what you say, right? No, I just don't remember whether I noticed his face or not. He was just this ball of fury coming at me, and that's what I remember. And you said you couldn't see his eyes. That's what you just said, right? I don't remember seeing his eyes. So that means you didn't see his eyes, right? That doesn't mean that, it just means I don't remember looking into his eyes. So if he's down in this position that you're talking about with his head down like that, how could he possibly know to come after you if he's looking down? How is he going to do? Feel his way around? Sustained. He had his head down. That's what you said, right? He was like a... I can just describe it as like a linebacker unless I get up and act it out, which I would like to not do if possible. Then do it. Go ahead. Show us how he was standing immediately before, or how he was sitting or crouching immediately before this happened. If you could do it just from there. He... No, no, no. Go ahead and do it. Just stand. You're on the Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you go back to the jury room for approximately five minutes. We will call you back in approximately five minutes. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Please be seated. Counsel, you may approach. Mr. Martinez, you may proceed outside the presence of the jury. Can you just step to the left and then and then come down here? Don't you come all the way around? You may. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you leave the courtroom for a few minutes, approximately five minutes, and then we will call you back. 
I'm going to ask that the cameras stop recording at this time. Extend that foot to the left and show me the posture of uh, Mr. Alexander immediately before he rushed you, according to you. Um, as he was running. No, no, just, just show me. That's what I'm asking you to do, not talk. Show me. Show me the linebacker pose. He got down and. Well, show me. Show me the linebacker pose. That's what I'm asking for you to do. Okay. He went like that and he turned his head and he grabbed my waist. Just like that, correct? Pretty much. And he grabbed your waist, right? I can't say it's just like that, but that's what I remember. Well, no, just, just, I want, without talking, just show me the pose. He got down like that? Like that. Yeah. All right, go ahead and have a seat then. And ma'am, and you said that this happened right about here, correct? Um, I don't know, it was somewhere in the center of the bathroom. Right. So how is it, ma'am, that if you are shooting him, and that's the first thing that happened. How is it then, ma'am, that the shell casing, Exhibit 111, then landed in blood? Objection calls for speculation. She's a ballistics expert. Oh, world. It didn't land in blood. You see Exhibit 111, right? Yes. That's the casing that was involved in this case, wasn't it? Yes. There was a casing that was ejected, wasn't it? Yes. And when you say that this happened, there wasn't any blood on the floor, was there? That's correct. This was the first, if you will, blow, correct? Yes. And this is how the casing landed. You see it? That's not how it landed from the blow. Ma'am, you do see the casing there, don't you? Yes. After it came at you, ma'am, and it, that happened, did you go down? We both went down. You went down on your back, right? Um, yes, I went on my back. Did you strike your head? Um, I don't recall striking my head that time. Okay, so the answer is no, you did not strike your head. Objection, ask the answer. Overruled. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I did, but I don't know. <laughs> and was he on top of you? How was he? How was it? He landed to the side of me and was grabbing at my clothes. Okay, so he landed to which side of you, the right or the left? The right. And so he landed to the right side, and now he's got this gunshot where? I didn't know he had a gunshot. I'm not asking you if, he had a, if you knew he had a gunshot. We know he did. I'm asking you, he's got this gunshot, and what's he doing? He's very pissed off, and he's trying to grab me. And he's speaking to you, right? Um, he was screaming obscenities at me. What's he saying to you at the, after he was shot? Tell me what he was saying. I don't remember the words. You can't remember a single word that he screamed at you afterwards? No, I don't. And he, he's screaming, screaming this loudly. Screaming implies that he's doing it loudly, correct? Yes. And so he is to your left or to your right? You're facing up. So is he to your left or right? My right. That means he's toward the tub, correct? He would be on that side, but not near the tub, I don't think. But it would be on that side, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you're saying he wasn't bleeding at that time? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, well, I don't know. You haven't asked me anything about that. Pardon? I don't think you've asked me anything about that. I'm him. asking you right now. Are you saying that he wasn't bleeding? No, I'm not saying that. So he was bleeding at the time, right? I don't remember seeing any blood at that moment. So when he's down there, you don't see any blood, right? No. So that, for example, there, at that point, there can be no blood in the bathroom. We can agree on that, right? No, I don't agree with that. There was blood somewhere in the bathroom immediately after you shot him, other than around him? I don't know. Well, you were there, right? Yes. You said that you ran in this direction, right? Yes. When he was chasing you, did you happen to see the blood over here on the left side when uh, you were running in that direction? There was no blood there when I was running in that direction. And was there any blood down here when you ran there the first time? No. How about any blood 
right here where it says number five. That's right here. No. So there was no blood when you shot him then, right? Um, not at the moment the gun went off. How about immediately after he was struck? Was there any blood? I don't remember. Weren't you looking at him or anything? Um, I wasn't like examining him or looking. But you weren't, no. you weren't looking at him? Right after the gun went off? Yes, right after the gun went off. I think I closed my eyes really tight. Well, I don't remember seeing him. I just remember getting hit really hard and we fell. So you remember going down and, and you don't remember looking at his face or anything like that, right? Not at that point. Well, aren't you, according to you, you don't know if he's been shot. Isn't he still a threat? Definitely. Right, and you're not trying to get away at that point, right? I was. Well, no, you said you had your eyes closed and you were just laying there. Didn't you just say that? No, I closed my eyes, I think, as the gun began to go off. All right. You opened them up at some point, right? Yes. Uh, did you open them up when he was right, lying right next to you on your right-hand side? I believe I did. And so then you see him bleeding, right? I didn't look at him. So you never looked at him, but he's cursing at you, though, right? Yes. He's cursing at you just like he was before, right? Um... Maybe not the same words, but he was cursing at me. He was cursing. He was cursing at you, uh, which you say precipitated this killing, right? Um, yeah. And so then you say that you're down on the ground and he's still cursing, whatever the words may be, right? Yes. And you're not looking at him now, right? No. You're not rolling away from him now, right? I'm attempting to get away at this point. Well, with your eyes closed, right? No. Your eyes are open now, right? I believe they are open, yeah. And you're not looking at the source of the danger then? Um, no. You're not? No. Why not? If you were looking at him before, and this is the reason that this person you, you claim may want to be threatening you, why don't you look at the, whatever the source is so that you can try to get away again? I don't need to because I already know what he's doing at that point. You, you think he's what? I didn't need to because I already knew what he was doing at that point. You already knew what he was doing at that point? Yes. You knew he was cursing, right? Yes. You knew he was right next to you, right? Yes. You knew he was grabbing at you, right? Yes. And so you just got your eyes closed and you don't even know where you're going to go? Um, I believe I said my eyes weren't closed at this point. Okay, so your eyes are closed for how long? I don't know. I just blinked hard, I guess. I don't know. So then you do open your eyes, right? Yes. Then do you see blood? I don't remember seeing blood. So you don't even see blood at that point then, right? No. And he's still not dead, right? Definitely not. He's very angry. He's very angry. And this is seconds afterwards, right? Yes. Is he on all fours now? Um, he's on the side of me grabbing at my clothes and grabbing at me. So he's on, the, on your right side grabbing at you, right? Yes. Is he punching at you? Um, no. Is he hitting you? No. Is he, is he doing anything else? He's just trying to, it seemed like he was trying to get control of me and I was trying to push him away and get out. Throughout this whole thing where you are having this confrontation to him, do you ever tell him to stop? Do you ever tell him to do anything? I think I screamed stop when I pointed the gun at him. And any, when, he, when he's next to you on the right hand side, did you say anything to him? I don't remember. Are you saying that you're having a hard time remembering things that are happening now that you've shot him? Yes. So it appears then that your memory becomes faulty immediately upon you shooting him. Yeah, things get very foggy from there. That's immediately, the shot takes him down and it creates a fog for you. Is that what you're saying? It begins to create a fog. So, but you weren't struck by the shot, were you? No. Uh, in fact, um, you don't have really any injuries as a result of killing him, do you? Other than the one to your left finger, left ring finger, correct? That's the only visible injury. Pardon? That's the only visible injury. I'm talking about visible injuries, right. That's the only visible injury that you have, the one to your left ring finger. Even though, according to you, he slammed you down, 
right, when he got out of the shower, and then he slammed you down again when he, when he was coming at you and you had to pull the gun, according to you, right? Yes. And he's also grabbing at you while you're down on the ground, and he's not being gentle about it, right? That's correct. No bruising, no anything other than just a thing to the, the injury to the left ring finger, right? I don't know if my skull was bruised. Pardon? I don't know if my skull was bruised. Aside from that, you, but uh, do you get medical care for that? No. Do you seek medical care for your finger? Um, no, I did not. Not professional medical care. Well, you do have an injury to that left ring finger, don't you? Yes. And so when you arrive out in West Jordan, Utah, and you see Mr. Burns, you did have an injury to your left finger. We're Correct? talking about two different injuries. No. Well, ma'am, you just told me when we were talking about this killing that, yes, you injured your left ring finger. Do you remember just telling me that just now, uh, more, no more than two minutes ago? Yes, I was referring to this injury. Ma'am, were we really talking about this particular injury at that time? I didn't know. You were just oh, talking no, about the injury. Oh, you don't know we were talking about the killing, ma'am? You talked about the injury to my left finger. What have we been talking about the whole afternoon? Objection, argumentative. Overruled. Uh, June 4th. Pardon? June 4th. Right, we haven't mentioned any other date, right? Not to my recollection. You've been here throughout these proceedings and you've been answering or you've been asked questions, right? Yes. And as we were talking about it just now, I asked you, isn't it true that the only injury as a result of this incident was this injury to your left ring finger. And you said, yes, do you remember saying that? I might have, but that's not what I meant. Well, ma'am, you did say it, didn't you? I don't know. And in fact, I followed it up by saying, and you didn't seek medical care. Do you remember me asking that? I thought you meant about my No, do you skull. remember me asking you that? Yes, I remember And do you remember that you said, well, not professional medical care, do you remember that? I was referring to the splint Travis made for my finger. I, I'm, I know that that's what you're telling me now, but the line of questioning before involved the shooting. That's what we were talking about, right? Yes, but then you and mentioned Mr. my Ale left finger. Mr. Alexander was dead after that, wasn't he? Um, well, not immediately after that. No, no, he grabbed the knife that you stabbed him with, right? So he wasn't dead immediately after that, right? She says she hasn't remembered. Restate your question. And we're talking about Mr. Alexander, an individual that you just shot, right? So it's, it's not like we're talking about him providing any medical care for you, are we? That's right. You're the person who has come in here, at least we know that you've indicated that you did kill Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. The only incident where this could have happened was on June 4th of 2008, right? Yes. So this issue of him providing a splint or splinting your finger really doesn't have anything to do with June 4th of 2008, does it? No. And you did say that the only injury you received was to your left ring finger on June 4th of 2008, right? I didn't say that. Well, yes, you did, and in fact, no, you didn't. used the word visible injuries. Do you remember using that term? Yes, yes I do. Argumentative. She said that that's not what Thank she said. You. And do you remember that you also indicated, well, I may have had some injuries to my head, right? Yes. Those were the only injuries that you sustained on June 4th of 2008, and you remember I asked you about that, and you said yes. That's not how I understood your question. So then he's down, ma'am, and he's to your right. What happens then? I break away from him, and he screams out, fucking kill you, bitch. So then, even though you've already shot him, he's been grabbing at you, he does say, I'll fucking kill you, bitch, right? I don't think he said, I'll. I just remember those, those words are in my head. He may have said that, may have not. Okay, I just what are the words? You, bitch. Let's, let's, let's get, hear the words one more time so we can get them right. I heard him say, fucking kill you, bitch. Yeah, aren't these the same words that you indicated that you heard when he was doing his pirouette outside of the uh, shower? Fucking kill you, bitches. Aren't they the same words? 
Um, I don't think they were the same. He was still screaming at me though when he was coming out. So then what did, just so that we're clear, what did he say as he's getting out of the shower? As he's getting out of the shower, he called me a fucking idiot and said a fucking five-year-old can hold a camera better than you. But then when he's down after being shot, he says, fucking kill you, bitch, right? After I broke away from him, right after he screamed right. that out when he and couldn't grab me anymore. He's trying to grab you and he's still on the floor, but you're able to get away, right? Yes. I thought you said that he was this really, remember when you had the conversation with Detective Flores and you told him, well, he's a really strong guy. He's a wrestler in high school. Do you remember saying that? Yes. You're saying that you're able to get away from this man who's a wrestler in high school, who's very strong on the ground. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. And then what do you do? I don't really remember. I just remember. I don't remember anything at that point, so I would be speculating. So you don't remember a single solitary thing after that, right? There are a few little pieces that have come back since, but not immediately after, I don't remember. Okay, what, what is it that the pieces that have come back? Tell me what you remember about this, whatever pieces you remember. Um, at one point, I remember dropping the knife and screaming. But that's something that has come to you since, right? Since, yes. It you don't came remember to me that. Time. Time. All right, what else? Um, the others are more vague, so I'm not sure. If they're vague, then we don't want to hear them. Yeah. Where were you standing when you have this recollection of dropping the knife and screaming? I don't remember the exact position, but I was in the bathroom because it hit the tile. And that's all that you remember with regard to this particular event, correct? Um, from that point to that point, yes. Judge, may we approach? Okay. <clears throat>